In this video, you're going to learn how to put images on um, your Moodle page. And those could be images that are on your home page. So for example, if you look at some of the HTML blocks on the left, I have a Moodle icon, I have my school photo, and on the right I have a flame over here, and a picture of Julie Schlecht. Um, you can also put images on your assignments, your pages, your quizzes, etc. So for example, if I click on the lay of the land right here, I go to a page and I have a Moodle icon as well as an embedded video. So how is it that we get images on our page? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that. First of all, I need to find an image. So I'm going to show you my favorite spot for finding images that are actually uh, real photographs, which is Flickr. And it's not the only place to get an image. You might have your own school photo, or you might have some photos that you've taken with your uh, smartphone or your own camera. And then uh, to get clip art and whatnot, I will generally use a Google image search. So let's get a photo each of these different ways. Let me tell you a little bit about Flickr. Flickr has just a trillion bazillion real photographs on it. So let's say you were looking for a picture of a school bus. I would put in that search term in the upper right hand corner, press return. And what I would do is I would take a look at these pull down menus here at the top. And um, particularly the one that says li license because you don't really want to take a photo that is going to be copyright protected. And a lot of the photos on um, in Flickr are made available to the public with what's called a Creative Commons license. So Creative Commons means that the actual owner of the photograph is saying, hey, you can use my photograph. And sometimes um, people will want you to put some text underneath giving credit to the owner of the photograph. And sometimes they don't care if you do that either. So anyway, I'm gonna filter my results by commercial, oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna filter my res results by Creative Commons only. And in fact, um, these photographs are allowed for commercial uses, which isn't necessarily important to me. All right, so here we go. I have found this image of school buses. So I could click on it. And um, if you take a close look at this, this is going to tell you um, what kind of Creative Commons licensing is required by this photo. And this one does require you to link back to the owner's page. And um, you could do that with just a really small text under the picture. But um, if I were to use this on my Moodle page, I'm going to want to download it. I'm going to download it um, at a medium size. Actually, let me, I'm going to probably do it at a small size. I know one of the HTML blocks on the page is 270 pixels wide. So the small size will do just fine. All right, so you notice if you look down here that I've downloaded that photo. So that's a little bit about Flickr and the fact that you can filter by Creative Commons, um, those that are not copyright protected. I'm gonna close this tab and now we're gonna do the same sort of thing with a Google search. So if I wanna get a school bus again, I could type in my search term. And in this case, um, on the results screen, I just wanna see images. And if it was actually clip art that you wanted, you could click on search tools and you could go to type and you could choose clip art. Then you could further filter your results by going to usage right, rights and then say uh, labeled for reuse. That means that these um, have been specifically labeled as um, images that can be used by other people. So that will help you just to be a little more comfortable with the copyright um, status of the particular image that you're looking at. All right, so let me just say that I want to try this one right here. So I'm going to click on it. I do want to kind of glance at the size. If this number here is like over a thousand or something like that, that's a really big image. And you would either want to go into a piece of software like preview on the Mac side to reduce the size of it, or maybe look for a smaller image. But anyway, I am going to take this one and I'm going to say view image. And if I wanted to download this one, let's take a peek here. 
This is in the public domain, free for commercial use. Well, that's awfully nice. So I'm going to download. I have to, in this particular case, I have to uh, type in this little word here, and then I'm going to click download. All right. Now I got two school buses. So how is it that I get these into my Moodle page? Well, they're probably in my downloads folder, but let me show you how I would go about doing that. So I'm going to say turn editing on. And I have a bunch of HTML blocks here. If you wanted a new HTML block that would be a blank block to put any sort of content in that you wanted, you could click Add. You have to have editing turned on when you do this. And you can add an HTML block. So I'm just going to do that real quick. And that ends up um, on the bottom left. Uh, you can move it around on your page. You see this little icon right here. If I click and drag it up and touch the block above it, it'll move up. And you can continue to do that. So you can move it around your page. There's nothing in it right now. But if I wanted to put my school bus in there, I would click on the configure button and I'm going to go and choose configure the block. Now, regardless of whether you're in a quiz or an assignment or a page, um, you have a toolbar that looks like this. Sometimes it's collapsed, but if you click here, you can expand it. And this is the tool that you will use to add an image. So I'm going to put my cursor in here. I want it centered on my page, so I'm going to click on that icon. And now I want to add an image. So it says, okay, find and upload an image. When I click on that, I have to choose a file from my computer. If you do not see this here, you should contact me, Terry Osland, because I've seen people have that uh, quirkiness before, just a little buggy thing. Usually if you try a different browser, like if you're using Chrome, use Safari, or if you're using Firefox, use Chrome, um, you can get this to show up. But that has been a little buggy lately. Click Choose File. And now I got to go find the image that I just downloaded. And let's see, probably should have named it something, but um, if I look down here, I can kind of see what it was named. So, um, or I could sort these things by last, the date they were added. All right, so now my, aha, there's my school bus. Okay, so I can click on that and I can click open and then upload. Now usually you are prompted to put in um, an de image description, so like school buses. This is to make it more accessible to people who have their browsers reading to them so that instead of looking at the image, if there's a sight impaired person, they will get um, uh, audio version of the image. You click insert and then I click save changes and lo and behold, I have an image on my page. All right, well, what if I wanted to swap that out for my clip art? I could go back in here and I could click and delete my image and I'm gonna add the other one. So I say find or upload, choose file. And the that was called school bus, it's right here. I can open, I can upload. Now you can see that this is a much bigger image. Um, so I might do some resizing once I get it in there. But again, I'm going to put in some text that describes that image. And wow, look at that, it's big. So in this case, I probably would want to click on this icon to go into full screen mode so that I can click on it and I grab this lower corner. It's a little bullet or handle right here. And I can make it smaller that way. All right because my HTML block is really not that big. Now I toggle off, out of full screen mode, scroll down to the bottom, and I can save my changes, and I have that image there. All right, um, in the next video, you will learn how to um, have an images that are set to, if you look at this one right here, how you can put an image that it has text that wraps around it, and I also will talk to you about linking, hyperlinking um, from within an HTML block or within an assignment description or a quiz question or whatever. All right, so we'll talk about hyperlinking and placing images that get word wrapped next.